Welcome to our weekly market review brought to you by ETM Analytics and Treasury One. I'm joined by Treasury One's currency strategist, Andrei Salia. Andrei, another blissful Monday morning in South Africa as the Springboks beat uh, the All Blacks for a second time in a row. So obviously I can't wipe the smile off my face, uh, but we are here to, to talk finance and not give our opinions on, on our favorite sport. So last week, obviously, the big focus was on the U.S. payrolls data. There's, a, there's obviously this big focus on what's happening in the labor market in America. And the data was interesting. Yes, unemployment ticked slightly lower. But one data said, doth not a trend make, right? One day never makes a trend. Good morning to everybody. But a few events makes a trend. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the graphs that we have in front of us, and we start with the U.S. non-farm payroll growth. Now, non-farm payroll growth, a very important indicator of what happens in the U.S. economy. And we can clearly see that that is not a one-day graph. That is a trend. If we look at the uh, second one, well, that's a one-day thing. You know, that's where the market, where something happens. Um, and if I look at that heck of a spike, then, you know, movements in Japanese yen, mm -hmm. uh, the whole scenario around that and carry trade jumps to mind. And we can see how a market can really get ahead of itself. Uh, you know, at that stage, mm. there was talk about an emergency cut of rates by the Fed and so forth. And we can see how a market gets ahead of us itself on a day or two, and then it dwindles away, and we're back to a more expected 25 basis point cut. And that's also in line with uh, the Fed's Mr. Waller that kind of dismissed the chances of a 50 basis point cut and in his speech said you know they will remain data dependent if you look at the uh, other two graphs that we have there the u.s unemployment rate once again not a once off figure that came out it is kind of bottomed out and slowly ticking upwards so mm. once again not like our blue happy market let's just grab one thing on a day and get ahead of ourselves and similarly with the u.s uh, pce inflation rate uh, that's been on the downward spiral for quite some time so what does these things tell us well we can expect a 25 basis point cut as we've mentioned over the last couple of interviews that we've had uh, dismissing once off happenings and more looking at trends that mm. favors a 25 basis point cut mm. no it's if you if you look at the data it's definitely a bit of a mixed bag we saw adp data was softer than anticipated as well um if you delve deeper into the data you'll see there was an increase in temporary employment so the, even the labor market, I know, like we said, like unemployment's down and it's um, it's not the trend. It was definitely the signs are there uh, uh, that will necessitate a 25 base point cut. And that's this mixed bag is obviously also about keeping the Fed, like you said, a, a bit cautious and data dependent. Um, just before we get to this week's inflation data, interestingly as well, the U.S. equity market responded quite negatively to the payrolls data. Um, there's this high level of uncertainty and there's definitely a a necessary adjustment for stock markets there that are considered overvalued at the moment. So they will remain sensitive as we look towards next week's Fed rate cut decision. Well, I say rate cut decision, but I think it's it's more or less in the bag. Uh, of course, this week there will be some focus as well on the US CPI. Uh, uh, the, the, the estimates is that it will move down to 2.6 year on year. Still not where the Fed wants it. It's um, They're still wanting a 2% target, but it's definitely, again, the trend is moving there. Yes, the trend is moving there. And I think we've said many a time on these interviews that 
the Federal Reserve is forward looking and they're looking at trends and whether it is going there. And then we've mentioned here more than once that the Federal Reserve has got, unlike us that just has an inflation target, have got two targets. They look at both inflation and the jobs data. And the, job, the jobs data is clearly in uh, less employment, higher unemployment. So that could, if continues uh, for a prolonged period, place more consumers under pressure because there's less people in jobs, and that could have an impact on inflation as such coming down, but it could also end the American economy in a not soft landing, but a more hard landing. So I think, as you mentioned, the 25 basis points is in the bag. We expect inflation this week. It's expected to come out at 2.6%. So any deviation from that will increase speculation as to what happens with the interest rate decision. Uh, and coming out at the 26 would definitely then underline and enforce uh, our suspicions of a 25 basis point cut. You mentioned uh, it's in the bag. Nothing is in the bag before the end of the meeting. The chances of it happening is on the increase. And I would say the probability of that happening is around 80%, but it's not in the back. And what's that nice famous saying? It's not over till the fat lady sings. Or until the referee blows his whistle, just ask the all black, right? All of this is great, uh, but obviously, basically, we want to know what it does all mean for the rand. What this all means for the rand is, I think, if you look at the markets, if you look at equity markets, if you look at exchange rates, so the movement of the dollar, the movement of the rand, it says to us, we've discounted 25 basis points. The movements has taken place. And if that happens, if that 80% chance comes off, we will remain within the range. We will not break out. We will have no massive surprises. A 50 basis point cut, that will warrant a change in exchange rates, in equity markets, etc., uh, of substantial moves. And that could be negative for the dollar, that could be positive for the rand, but even then, I think we will remain within the range, but we will trade down closer to the 1715. In other words, closer to the bottom end of the range. That's for a 50 basis point cut. My 80% expectancy is we remain where we are, little bit here, little bit there, but firmly entrenched into this range. And we must remember that we also expect the South African Reserve Bank to follow mm. on the heels of the Federal Reserve with a interest rate cut. So not too much of a change in interest rate differentials. In other words, the range will remain intact. I feel like Governor Lesetje Ganyago has got his, his like hand on that button ready to push for the cuts, but we're of course waiting for the Fed. For now, markets will likely tread water as we head into next week's big rate cut decision. Um, it's going to be an interesting time ahead, but Andre, then we will chat again on Monday. You must have a good week. Yes, we will chat again on Monday and that will be closer to the decision process. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, I see that the uh, Pension funds is having a ball of a time with requests for money. So also in the next few weeks, we'll know more about that. And we'll know more of how that could play out on economic growth for mm -hmm. South Africa or a jump in that because of this. Mm -hmm. And also whether it will have an impact on our inflation rates. Great. Thanks, Andre.